Thank you so much, Jim. I'm going to see if my other mic is working, so if we don't use this. Can you hear me this way? Yes. Yeah. You can hear me this way? Okay. Yeah. Well, let's do it. First of all, I want to say thank you so much for your energy and enthusiasm. This A1 team, absolutely amazing. That's some good team spirit over there. But I, I have to say, when I came in here earlier, I saw a couple of teams, I think the F2 team, that was really working together beautifully as a group, both saying, this is what I'm good at, I'm good at drawing stick people. I'm good at this. Let's draw together. You know, oh, I think I have the F2 laughing area. Yeah, right there. But there are some really great qualities about what you're going to be gaining this week that you're going to actually be able to apply to things right now and in your future. I'll tell you right now, I did a program similar to this program when I was your age. It helped me do some of the things I'm going to tell you right now. And what I have here is the 5P philosophy. When you leave here today, I realize that you may only take away 10% of what I'm going to tell you. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. But I want you to remember these five things. Because what it is, is the 5P philosophy of principles, passion, people, persistence, and peace. Okay, so if I say that this is going to be the most important thing to really take away with, do you think I'm going to ask you about it later? Yes. Yes, there we go. So let's get started. When when, when we look at our principles, there is something that's very important to think about. You are who you are in spite of or because of. And what I mean by that is there are certain things that will happen in your life and two very distinct things that can happen as a result. For example, my mother is ex it's a little bit negative. She would tell me things like, Molly, don't be too happy. People will think you're fake. <laughs> so I had a choice at that moment, and I think you know what I, I chose to do at that given time. I said, okay, I'm going to be who I am in spite of. My mother is a very loving person. She's just very different than who I am. My father, he's the entrepreneur. That entrepreneur, though, didn't come out in me until five years ago. It's those things that we're going to go through, this 5P philosophy that you're going to learn in spite of or because of. I'm going to bring, because I'm from the Philadelphia area, I'm going to bring in Ben Franklin. We have three in the house. All right, we have three in the house. That's great. That's great. And virtues, according to Ben Franklin, do you know that he had 13 virtues that he lived his day, or at least attempted to live every day of his life. He actually had a little thing that he stuck in his pocket and at the end of every day he checked off the ones that he needed to work more on. At the end of his life, he didn't get them all, but he got 12 of them. Temperance was the last one and yes, he liked to <laughs> imbibe a little bit, so that's one that he wasn't able to accomplish. But if we think about what he did and apply it to our own lives, It'll help us in our direction as to where we're going to go in life. How many of you have a clue as to what you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. All right, guess what? That may change. And that's okay. You heard a little bit from Tim saying, I went to Gettysburg College, I did elementary education, as well as uh, psychology, and now here I am running companies. You know, you just don't know what, where that's going to go, but it's the adventure. So, virtues are your guiding principles. I'm going to tell you, my virtues, family, integrity, adventure, helping others. I didn't say money. I have a story to tell you that I thought it was money. When I graduated from Gettysburg College, actually in 1996, I, I said, you know what, I'll go into the field of admissions. I was a tour guide for the university. I did some other things. I'll go into admissions. Did that for a few years, but I got the call. The call that said, Molly, do you want to make a six-figure salary? I said, oh yeah, I'm there. I was 23. Six figures? Absolutely. I said bye-bye to my $28,000 job at the time. And my parents thought, yeah, you go, girl. Go for it. I left a job that I absolutely loved. I loved the people I worked with. I loved the camaraderie. I love the team aspect. I love so many things about this job. But I went to work for Wells Fargo, where I would travel across the states and going from college to college to college. 
at the end of 11 months, I couldn't have been more miserable. And my parents were like, I don't understand. You're making six figures, Molly. Why are you not happy? Well, I learned right there and then that money was not in my top five virtues. Think about what your principles are. And sometimes when you feel that way, ask yourself, why are you feeling that way? So, you'll never believe what I did next. Again, my parents, in spite of her because of, I decided to leave that job at 11 months. And if I would have stayed to the 12 month, I would have gotten a bonus of $30,000. My parents were not excited about that decision, but you know what? Someone called me about another position. I took it and it was at Westchester University. And I was working in admissions and financial aid. I thought, yes, this is what I want. I was missing the team, helping people. Remember, that's my values. Think about what's important to you. Because we're going to talk about seeking your truth. Seeking your truth. Not seeking the truth of what mom and dad, brother, sister, aunt, friend, everybody thinks you're supposed to do. Always think about what they're giving you, but try to find what that truth is inside of you because that's going to help you propel you to where it is you're supposed to be going next. My mother, she was a teacher, so I thought I should do education. That was good. There was lots of transferable skills at that moment, but there was that seeking your truth to find out where exactly you are supposed to be. The last one is your struggle for power. In principles, how many of you have ever had an argument with a friend? Okay, just, you know, we all had some kind of argument, whether with a friend, relative, whatever it is. Sometimes it's because you share a different value system. So if, if you look at it that way, that, okay, we just have differences of opinions, and this is why it might be, it's easier for you to work through that more quickly. In business, you're all running your own business this week, right? You're developing it, you're going to present it at the end. You're going to have little struggles for power, perhaps, along the way. You have to embrace that, because th at the end, that's what's going to make it even better. So, passion. Live intentionally and engage in the flow. What does that mean? Well, when I took that job at Westchester University in admissions and financial aid, I decided this isn't where I'm supposed to be. So I said, you know what, I did like teaching, but I wasn't supposed to be teaching in elementary education. I started seeking about master's programs. I didn't know there was a training in organizational development master's program. That's where you go and you learn how to teach adults and, and speak and, and go in and fix organizations that are broken. So I thought, oh, that's exactly what I want to do. Got my master's and I started doing things for free at Westchester University. I had my day job, but then I also started doing things for the university. They liked what they were seeing. They created a position. That can happen, folks. When you focus on your passions and you do certain things for free, don't be afraid to do that because those are the things that you're learning and they're going to see you and they're going to seek you out to do greater things for that company. And it might not be just for that company. You might say, hey, I have enough skills now that I want to jump off and do it myself. So engage in the flow. That's exactly what I did. After they, they recruited me and, and they said, Molly, I want you to be training faculty, staff, and students, I said, I want to do it myself. But instead, I started my first company. It was a huge failure. Huge failure. It was called My Internship Gopher. I saw a lot of students that were really looking for seeking for where it is I'm supposed to go next. So I thought, oh, if I developed a database system where high school students could be with business people and then the schools can get involved and then make a match, that'd be perfect. But I didn't take into account whether the schools would embrace something like this. Students love it. Parents loved it. Lots of people loved it. The schools who needed to drive it didn't. It was an utter failure. I was about ready to give up and say, you know what, I'm just going to close the business. I'll give it one last push. I went to a chamber event. This is where a lot of business and entrepreneurs get together. And I said, I'm going to give it one last push. I met a man that was giving a keynote, just like today, 
called Minor Success Principles. I said, this is interesting. This is fabulous. And I liked the man and what he stood for. So at the end of his speech, I said, let me develop your speaking company. Did I ever develop a speaking company? No. But you know, if you have the passion and you connect with the people, there are lots of things that you can make happen in your world. So surround yourself with the inspiration. I said, you know what? I can start with this rhino living. I can build a business. I had to learn a lot. And I did it all for free. But because I built this man's company, I then could do my own. I did my own Molly Sunshine group where I go across the nation speaking. But then I also get paid for what you know. How many of you think you know something? What is it that you know? Shout out something that you feel like pretty confident that you have a skill in. What do you think? Oh, I so missed it. What was it? Girls. Girls? Is that what you said? You know what? Take those transferable skills. You have the skills, let's say with girls. Well, you know what? There are certain transferable skills. He might have the ability to social. He might have persuasive influence. He might be able to speak confidently in front of a group. Think about what you're good at now and apply it. What else is someone good at? Anybody make web pages? Anybody can design web pages? Anybody blog? Okay, we have web page developers. We have bloggers. How many of you have more than a thousand friends on Facebook? You know, those are the skills, believe it or not, that companies are now hiring folks to do. Crazy as it is, but what you're doing every day, and don't go home and say, this lady told me it's a marketable strategy, Mom, so I need to build my list of friends on Facebook. That's not the purpose. But these are the, but these are the skills that you're gaining right now that will help you even freelance. What I mean by that is, you might say, hey, I saw a hand over here. She can build web pages. She might do it at a discounted rate. But then, then, then when she graduates, she's going to have a whole portfolio of all the businesses that you've been able to do. And those are the things that you can be doing right now. Think about what you know. And don't discount it either. It's like, well, you know, I, don't, I only know how to. How many of you think you're good writers? Okay, look at that. Look how many writers are in here. If I told you that you can go into Hugo and a couple different other websites and get paid for just submitting 200 paid art 200 word articles, and you can have like 100, 200, 300 bucks, it just coming in like that. You're going to be paying for your college before you even get out of high school. There are these things that we need to be thinking right now that are going to be marketing you now. So surround yourself with the inspiration and inspire others with your presence. Now, if, if I came up on stage and I would be like, yeah, so today I'm going to teach you how to dream big, shine bright. And yeah, I hope you gain something from here, but you know, if you don't, you don't. You'll be like, where did they find this lady? You know? <laughs> so you need to be thinking about how are you showing up in the world? Because how you show up in the world is how you're going to get to where you're going next and you may not even know where it is that you're going next, but other people will be smart enough to figure it out. How many of you think you have a pretty strong presence? Okay, a couple of you. Okay, I'm, I'm going to take a risk now, dream big, shine bright. I'd love one of you to come on up. Raise your hand. Oh, I love it. Bring it. Bring it. And what team are you on? G1. G1. Let's hear it for G1. Come on up. What is your name? Antonio Blundo. Okay, hello, Antonio. My name is Molly Neese. We're going to teach them a very important thing today. All right. We're going to teach them how to come up with something, what's up. So when I say what's up, my, my skill to all of you is to take home is not to say, yo, did you catch the whatever was on last night? That's not what you're going to be saying with what's up. You're going to say something passionate, something you're passionate about. So I'm going to give him an example. And then, Mr. Spontaneity, Anthony, you're going to give me something that you're passionate about. You're going to tell me something that you're passionate about as well. So I'm going to tell you something that I'm passionate about. Yes. Yeah. So when I say what's up, here we go. We're going to give an example of 
everyone. Hi, my name's Molly. What's up? Right, hey. <laughs> well, I'm just got, I'm so honored. It's a humbling experience. Yesterday, I just got a call from a mainline Today magazine that I'm going to be one of their top 20 women on the move. Wow. Yes. That's good news. Yeah. Now, what I just, see, I love your energy. You have great energy. I mean, we need to be able to adjust as well. I mean, he has, I could tell he has really good energy. If I would do that to somebody who was perhaps more shy, they would be running out of this place faster than you can even imagine and say, who is this lady? You know, she's all about herself. You know, but, but you, so you need to adapt. Too. When you're sharing your passions, adapt it. So when I say to Anthony, Anthony, hi, so I heard great things about you. What are you up to now? Well, you know, a lot of different things. I was in Time Magazine, Star Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm because I'm going to be in a new movie this fall. I'm really excited about it. Oh my gosh, what's the movie? <laughs> Antonio <laughs> Lost in Time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Of me going back to my childhood and fixing mistakes that I made. Oh my god, I love it. You know what? I help yourself to one of my books. Help yourself. There's like five of them down there. Choose whichever ones. There's like five different ones. But anyhow, what he just did was see, look at what everybody said. They were just like, you guys were all juiced up. You know, I'm going to tell you a little impromptu thing. What he just did was called Fake It Till You Make It. What that means is, you know, he probably won't be in the movie, but you know what? Not today. But when you put that out to that universe, I could actually say, because I do have two producers that if that's one of your passions, I can connect you with to kind of go through that if, and learn about what the business is all about. You know? <laughs> but if he just told me, yeah, you know, I'm just here, you know, this week doing something, you know, my mom made me come. You know? There's a difference. Do I want to be around that person or do I want to be around him? I want to be around you. You know, so these are the things we really need to be thinking about. So inspire others with your presence. There's no doubt, five years from now, because where you say you're going to be in five years is where you're going to be, you're going to be somewhere great. And, and you hold that. And today, you heard it here, okay? So what we want to do is not just thrive, we, or not just survive, we want to thrive. Like, I could have very easily said my first company, my internship, Grofer, it was a total failure. You know, so I'm just going to go back and just do what I always do during the day job. No. You ask yourself, now what's next? What is going to be the next thing that I'm going to be able to get to all of you? My internship gopher, well, I would not never be in front of all of you right now. You know, telling you to live your dreams and shine bright. What he just did is he shined bright. You know, and you dream big. You know, those are two very important things. Because as we go, it's the people. I want you to establish your oikos. Oikos is Greek. Oikos, you might be saying it's yogurt. Yes, it's yogurt too. But oikos really means family, community, the people you choose to surround yourself with. Napoleon Hill wrote a great book, Test of Time, Think and Grow Rich. Don't think that it always has to be money. It's whatever you want, think about it. And what happens with establishing your oikos is you're the average of the 10 people you spend the most time with. All right, here's another thing that I want you to do individually. We're going to do the average of five. Think about who you spend the most time with, these five people. Okay, think about it. All right, you got them? Okay. So, when you got it, put your high five up. All right, now what I want you to do is think about these five people and keep your positive influences in your life up. Okay, now look at them and say, who am I going to keep and who am I going to kick off the bus? All right, this is your homework. You put your hands down. It's very important. Some of you might not be able to kick everyone off that bus. For example, I put my thumb down. 
and this is my mother, but you know what? <laughs> and she read my book, so it was a wonderful conversation to have with her through all of this. Actually, to be quite honest, and that's what we're going to be going into, even those that you can't get rid of, you can improve your relationship with that person. You know, you can set those limits, you can expect, set those expectations of conversation, and now she knows and has more self-awareness when she opens up her mouth. So when she said to me, Molly, you look like death warmed over when you don't wear lipstick. She didn't think about what she was saying. She actually was just saying, Molly, you look be more beautiful when you wear lipstick. See, that would have sounded a little bit differently, right? So it's those kind of things, though, that as you grow and as you mature and as you grow stronger and clear the clutter and come into your own is when you can continue to shine bright. So this one person... I'm still glad she's in there because you know why? If I, have a, if I have a problem, I have a lot of people that can help me solve it, but I also know who to go to, who I know that will be able to put down all the things that could go wrong. So if I need a problem solver, I know I need her and my team to brainstorm all these ideas, and then I say thank you for your feedback, and then move on. You know, because everybody on the team has a role. Everyone on your average of five has a role. But there are certain folks that should be eliminated off your five. You know who they are. And it's tough to do, I know. But if I can tell you that now on my average of five, I have people like Tracy Davidson of NBC, who's, who's a news anchor for those who are Philly, you know, some other people in my average of 10 that five years ago, I may not have felt that they'd be in my average of 10. Don't surprise yourself. Because how you show up in the world is who you're going to attract. So think about that. Those combat, those energy zappers, that's why I love, like to call them. There are ways to set those limits, but you have to model the way. When you start modeling the way, do you think negative people love being around me? <laughs> no. I used to have people come into my office with all their rah, 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 rah. But then when I come back to them and say, so, okay, what do you need me to do about it, and what are you going to do about it? Well, no, nothing. I'm like, okay, this is our expectations and limits. I can help you, but you need to help yourself here, and I can help you where I can help you. Guess what? There's the energy zappers. You put those expectations on, they don't come back. You get the ones that are just having a bad day, and you're able to help them through it. Think about that, folks. You can help people through their bad times, too. Help others join the shift. Help them shift through. And align those three Ps. Okay, three Ps. We've done three Ps, right? As 200 of you, you're going to come up with the three Ps that we hit so far. What's the first one? Principles. Principles. People. Passion. 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 People. People. Oh, my goodness. Who said persistence? You have extra gifts because... Persistence! That is the fourth, so well done on that one. Because you're exactly right. If you can have people, you can have principles, uh, and, and you can have all those great things, those passions, but without the persistence, they're just dreams. You know, I could have very, like I said, I could have very easily said, oh, my first business failed, so I'm just going, like, whatever. I'll just go, I'll say whatever, and crawl into a, a shell somewhere. But no, I held the vision. I want to share with you, this is, how many of you are going off to college next year? Okay, a couple of you. So all of you are familiar with the essay that you had to write to get into college, right? Well, I was searching just a couple months ago through, through these papers, and I found my essay to my grad school. This was in 2001. This is what, I'm just going to read you one thing. Ever since I was a girl, I love being in front of people and making a difference in people's lives. In the wor words of Woodrow Wilson, you're not merely here to make a living. You're here to enable the world to live more amply, with greater vision, and with a finer spirit of hope and achievement. You're here to enrich the world. You impoverish yourself if you forget this errand. Well, that's not part of my essay. I pulled this out. I'm like, well, that makes sense. All these companies that I'm building all has that foundation. So write that statement that it doesn't matter necessarily what it is that you do, it's how you're going to go about doing it. It can look a lot of different ways, 
But there's different things that you can do if you stick to these. So hold that vision and prepare and plan for that success. Every week, I write down SMART goals. How many of you have ever heard of SMART goals? SMART goals. Do, okay, a couple of you. Do, I, I'm going to put you on. If you, if you remember, great. If not, all the acronym, that's fine. S. Do you remember what S is? Specific. M is measurable. A, achievable. R, reliable. T, timely. All your goals should be smart. And if you're not going to remember that, just write it down and Google it later. There's tons of research against this. If you, every week, all my goals are smart goals. Specific, measurable, attainable, reliable, and timely. There. If you think about that, you're going to prepare and plan for your success. Realize the difference between tempters and guardians. I'm going to show you, well, you probably can't see it really, but... This past fall, I was able to present with Brian Tracy. And for those who don't know, he's an international uh, guy, a really folk and bestseller, I mean, millions and millions of books. He is he's the grandfather of goal setting. He is a, a trailblazer. And I got to present with him last fall. My father owned a baby shoe company, and he would make me listen to this guy when I would go to his company every Saturday morning when I was in high school. And I'm like, really, Dad? You know what? It's stuck. These, the goal setting really works. And when I said about, um, there, are, there are those that, there are those, here, let's get over here. There are tempters and guardians. My father, when I said I wanted to go into the speaking business, said, Molly, it's a whole bunch of fluff. And, and when the economy bombs out, your job is the one that's going to get cut. You need a stable job with good health benefits. And you'll probably get that, but that's all par for the course. That's just a part of them. Are they a tempter or a guardian? Meaning, are they there to take you off your game, or are they there to protect you? Make sure you ask yourself that question, because he was there to protect me. I took his feedback, and I continued on my way. But again, you need to be thinking about where it is that you're going. Because if you don't have all your P's in alignment, you're not going far. So think about that. Taking that fear not approach, I need another brave soul to take a fear not approach. Because I'm going to tell you, if you can do whatever business you want, this is the, this is the drill. Think about a business you'd love to start up, and if you knew that it would be a success, and money was not an issue, what would be that passion? Anybody have an idea of a business in their head they'd love to start? Gentlemen, come on up. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> comes forward. The man that can read my mind. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing. Come on up, and what is, what is your name? Matt. Matt. Matt Molly. Pleasure to meet you. So just so everybody can hear your lovely, lovely idea. What is your idea if money would not be an issue or you knew it was going to be a success? What's your business? A uh, catering business. Uh, where did that catering business come from, that idea? Uh, I go to culinary school. Uh-huh. So I would want to own a, a catering business. And how, how many people would you uh, employ in this catering business? Um. How, how many, how, who would be your market? Who would you really target to have this catering business to? People who want to spend a lot of money. <laughs> you know what? Well done, Matt. There you go. Give a look. Whatever you want. Thank you, Matt. And look, here's another one. If you don't have an idea as to what you want as a business, put it out there. Because guess what? What I didn't tell you is that the gentleman that I helped build the business, Rhino Living That, he actually is worth $20 million, and he, and he is in the restaurant business. So I can connect you to him, and then so he can really shorten your learning curve. I also have a couple executive chefs that are pretty high up there, too, so it helped you through that process. Would you like that? Yeah. Yeah. See, you know what? When you take risks, what, and, and it's not me saying, oh, I know so-and-so, but the message is, you put yourself out there, and you're rewarded when you put yourself out there and take a fear-not approach. You seize the opportunities. Seize the opportunities. 
The last one, peace. This is the one that most people forget about. Peace. Peace. When I say peace, shout out what that means to you. Love. Love, hippie. Beatles. Freedom. Save the whales. Save the whales. <laughs> Friendship. Happiness. Hugging trees. Sustainability. Loving Mother Earth. All that good stuff. You know what? Peace is going to mean different things for different people. Peace is going to mean different things for different people, and that's okay. Where we get caught up is thinking that what other people's peace is, is your peace. You need to go and say, what is it that makes you happy? I realize that money, I like economic serenity. That means I want to be able to pay the bills. But do I need to be $20 million? No. I'd rather be here speaking to all of you and making a difference in each of you. Even if it's not every one of you, at least one of you leave this room a changed person. So I want you to really fall in love with yourself both inside and out. That is a part of the peace process. You know, often they say you can't love others unless you look a hardcore in yourself. Think about what you love in yourself and what you would like to love more about yourself. Because eventually, you will be rewarded. I was trying to think of what would be a good story to tell because... All of you are juniors and seniors for the most part? Yeah. Juniors and seniors? Well, um, all during high school, I went to Hanover High School, my focus was just to make a difference and be good and be nice and, and really have a lot of fun, but then also do a lot of different things in high school. But you know what? Every single semester, all my friends would be on the homecoming court, all this other stuff. But it was never really a big priority. Well, I was never on the court. Senior year, prom, I ended up becoming prom queen. You know what? That wasn't my focus, but if you focus in the inside, it all comes out. You're rewarded for how you're showing up in the world. I'm like, do I put that on my resume? No. But the thing is, what you hold on to, what you hold on to, that it's not necessarily about us, how we're projecting, for example, how, how we go about, oh, I want to be in the popular group. It's how we ourselves are supposed to be showing up in the world and what we want to be to be true to ourselves. So I want you to think about something right now that you think you can't do. Mine is I can't do math. Anybody in that same boat? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's just say I have skills in other areas more so. But let's think about that. I can't. So when I say one, two, three, I want you to shout out what you can't do. One, two, three. I can't do math. Okay. All right, you got it. Now what I want you to do is when I count to three, I want you to say, replace the word can't with won't. So one, two, three. Wow. What's the difference, right? One is like, there is no hope. I am. And you know what? If I say I won't do math, you know who's coming after me because I'm a solopreneur, meaning I, I oversee, I'm the head of all those companies? The IRS is going to come after me. <laughs> because if I say I won't do math, well, I'm never going to do my taxes now, am I? Well, I better, and I do, and that's what we're supposed to do to secure our freedom, right? So, so change the I can't to I can. So, again, one, two, three. I can do math. I can do math. And yes, I can. I can do adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. No, I can do more than that. But you know, you need to start somewhere. Because your head, if you're saying I can't, you're really saying I won't out there to that universe. Say I can, and eventually you will. You will focus on it, and you will. And even if you won't ever be that that astute and whatever that is that you, you said, you're going to be able to attract somebody who is. You'll attract something, somebody in your circle who will help you achieve that. Try it. It works. So, journaling your way to peace, how many of you ever get stressed out? Yeah, it's part of life. Absolutely. And there's good stress and there's bad stress. And I tell you, the good stress, the good stress is really looking at your problems, writing them down, write down also, and this is a, this is a drill I'm not going to have you do right now, 
But write down for 20 minutes the thing that's on your mind, what you're going to do to try to change that outcome, and what that outcome is going to look like after you do it. And that's it. You know, with you beginning with the end in mind, you're going to be in a movie, man. That's great. You know, and that's the thing. You know, that some of these challenges will actually, because if you do, when you do pursue that, you're going to hit some bumps. It's just a part of, it's a part of show business, so you will. You know, but if you do some of these strategies to get yourself in the zone to get through it faster, that's the key. When I was being interviewed yesterday from, with a mainline Today magazine, she said, are you always like this? Do you ever have a down day? I said, absolutely. But I have my strategies in place in order for me to hit that bump hard and put it into overdrive and get right through it. We all have bad days, folks. And if we have bad days, that means that you're trying to move forward somewhere. It's all how you look at it. That's called positive reframing. Make it a part of whatever it is that's rocked your world to try to find that positive into what it is that you can move through it. So choose to live mindfully. That means that in every given moment, appreciate it. Right now, we have five minutes left to be together, so you might be like, oh good, because I really need to go to the bathroom. So you're living mindfully. <laughs> you know, but you might have five minutes left and be like, oh, I can't wait to talk to Molly afterwards to see what she can tell me about this situation. Or I really want to do this or that. Live in that moment. Because those moments, I wasn't always good at that because I'm always looking to achieve. And that is good. But you also need to think about what that piece is to make sure that where it is you're chasing is at your success, is at your peace. So this is a little bit about my world over the past five years. This, this guy here, this is the guy who allowed me, this is the 20 million guy, Rhino Living, who is the restaurateur that was able to now launch my legacy producer's business and now I help people build their speaking platforms and share their knowledge because there's a lot of people now who are retiring and they have great wealth of information in their head. I now help them make money off of it as to what they know because all of our generations, we can all learn from each and every generation what we have and all of us comes with our strengths. So here's, here's this Dream Big Shine Break book. Again, that's another story that I made my passion known. I saw this guy's art in a, in a gallery. I said, Hannafin. I said, I know that last name. It ended up being the nephew of my dad's best friend. Back in Hanover, Pennsylvania. You never know. You never know who you're going to meet out there. So you need to pay attention to every single P in this 5P philosophy. Because this is where you're going to achieve your dreams and shine bright. So having said this, the five P's folks, we're going to go through them and then we're going to shout them out, all right? The first one was? Principles. Principles. Second one? Passion. Passion. People. 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 Persistence. Persistence. Peace. Okay, you ready? When I say one, two, three. One, two, three. Principles. Passion. People. Persistence. Peace. You got it. Now you got it vocalized. Now you need to get it in your head because that's where you're going to dream big and shine bright. Thank you, everyone. Dream big.